Well, friends, sometimes the things that we are most familiar with are the hardest for us to truly understand. Or sometimes the things that we are closest to or most familiar with are the hardest for us to see clearly. There's a funny genre of posts on the internet that captures this beautifully and sort of hilariously. People share nowadays this, I was today years old when I discovered uh, sort of meme. And then they share things that they have been hot, that for them have been hiding in plain sight. And some of my recent favorites that I've seen that I too was shocked by, that I too was today years old when I discovered, were a few of these. I want to share them with you right now. I was today years old when I found out there's a bear in the Toblerone logo. Can you guys see it? Did you even know that was there? <laughs> I was today years old when I found out that the American Gothic painting, that famous painting, depicts a farmer and his daughter and not a farmer and his wife. I mean, hello, I totally missed that, but now I can't unsee it. I was today years old when I found out that loofahs are fruit, like real organic loofahs are fruit. That's wild, that is wild to me. <laughs> Maybe for some of you, that was all brand new news too, and you could tell us in the worship chat. We are often super unaware of what is right in front of us. Now in the letter we call 1 John, which we heard at the beginning of our worship service today, John very optimistically says that when God is revealed to us, we will see him as he is. And then we will know exactly how to be and who to be in this world because we will be like the one that we see so clearly. That is the point of revelation to see what is revealed. But I wonder if it is all that easy. Like, is it that easy? <laughs> in all the gospel accounts, uh, of the first time Jesus was revealed, when he rose from the dead after his crucifixion, nobody easily recognized him. Even with the people who knew him best in life, resurrected Jesus gets mistaken for a gardener, a random stranger on the road, and in today's story, a ghost. Now, a ghost is probably the closest and maybe best disciple sighting of Jesus, since they're at least seeing him as some sort of apparition of his former self. But the truth is, nothing and nobody sees the resurrected Jesus, according to scripture, nobody sees the resurrected Jesus uh, as he is. Not at first glance, at least. That means the hope that we hear in 1 John, that our own becoming is linked to our seeing God revealed and then patterning, patterning our lives upon it gets complicated. Do we trust ourselves to always see God so clearly? To see what it means to follow Jesus so clearly? Do we trust ourselves to see God's revelation? To see Christ in our midst? I wonder. And when I'm sitting in the posture of humility, I'm pretty sure I'm just as likely as those disciples to miss it. But there is one thing that Jesus does in Luke's gospel that gives me some hope that I might still be given eyes to see. See, Jesus, in that short little story where he eats fish in front of them, which I love that detail, but in that short little story, Jesus actually leads those disciples on a complete spiritual journey an entire spiritual journey in a matter of minutes. Now, hear me out. <laughs> when we talk about spiritual journeys in the church, and I was recently in a wonderful Zoom conversation with some of you, where one person was honest enough to share their truth that they weren't even sure what a spiritual journey was, but hearing that other people were having them sounded mighty nice. 
They wanted one too, but had no clue what it meant. I, honestly, I wish that we were more honest in conversations like this in the church. So I give that person who spoke up a lot of credit. Spiritual journeys can look and feel as different and varied as people do. And there's no two spiritual journeys that are exactly alike. But there are some common characteristics, and it's probably helpful to talk through them so that folks can at least have some guideposts. All kinds of religious and spiritual philosophers and psychologists have created stages of faith that more or less resonate with one another. But the amazing thing that I am here to point out to you today is that I see all of those stages of faith playing out in just a few minutes that Jesus is standing there eating fish in front of his friends. So let's stick to the gospel version of these stages of faith today. The spiritual journey that the disciples are on begins with them being startled and afraid. Now this is what happens when everything you thought you knew about the world turns on its head. The rabbi you thought was crucified is now standing in your house talking to you. Or the Bible you thought was full of historical and scientific facts turns out to be something else entirely. This often happens when people come face to face with a fact that their previous belief system cannot account for. When people start off with a baseline of religious fundamentalism or some sort of really strict religious upbringing, those facts are usually scientific or related to human rights somehow. But as someone who was raised myself in a very religiously liberal setting, I can assure you that uh, the world turned on its head when um, encountering an experience of the divine presence happened in my life, which you might have no basis of really truly grappling with or understanding without some sort of religious upbringing. Either way, spiritual journeys tend to begin in earnest with disruption. And fear can settle in. It is very scary to lose confidence in your worldview. But then comes the next stage. Jesus invites the disciples to explore. He tells them to touch and feel him. He shows them his hands and his feet, which would have borne the marks of the cross. This is a stage of giddy exploration. The scripture says the disciples felt joy, disbelief, and wonder. It's a beautiful way to describe the feelings that people have at this stage of faith. It's the stage of exploration. Your beliefs haven't entirely shifted yet, but you're trying things on. You go to different kinds of churches. You stop going to your church. You read different kinds of books. You attend different kinds of classes. You explore and see what might be out there. Some people call this stage a uh, deconstruction phase. You start to know what you don't believe anymore, even before you figure out what you do believe. Now this phase is important and it is joyful and it is beautiful. But fair warning here, this is also the phase that a lot of people can kind of stall out in on their spiritual journey because the next phase takes some effort. The next phase is where your spiritual journey starts to get deep. Jesus begins teaching the disciples about all the scriptures and stories they already knew, but he shows them how to actually understand them at a deeper level. To see them not as they once saw them, but in a totally new way. To understand the faith that was once so familiar in a much deeper and more complicated way sort of way. This is where the scripture says he opens their minds. And this is where things start coming together for people on their spiritual journey. This is where humility and knowledge start to dance with each other. This is where you start to find some grounding and some resonance and, and like you could really dig in and find nourishment somewhere. 
Now the final phase is when Jesus tells the disciples that they are witnesses. To be a witness means to have seen something. And here Jesus is telling them that they have indeed reached the point where they have seen something, or at least part of something. Some people call this phase harmony or integration. And as it as it said in the letter from 1 John that we heard earlier, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will have seen him as he is. This is where your spiritual journey starts impacting your whole life. You understand something new about God and the world, and you can't help but live differently because of it. You've seen it. You know it. So friends, when we look at Revelation, not just as a sudden awakening, you miss it, you know, you see Jesus or you don't see him, you miss him or you don't, um, but when we look at it instead as a lifelong spiritual journey, it gives me some hope. Because maybe like the disciples, we too might have eyes to see God revealed to us. It might take our whole lives instead of one living room conversation, but we might get there after all. Of course, seeing God revealed is not a single experience, one journey from start to finish. It's not like young people begin and then as they get older, they naturally just become more wise and integrated and whatnot. No, God is way more complicated than that. We can go through stages of faith uh, in like those in Luke's broiled fish story a hundred times in our lifetime. And God willing, we do. But the good news is that God is always inviting us to be shocked, to explore, to go deeper, and ultimately to see and live differently because of it. So if this sounds good to you, if a journey like this sounds exciting or even scary, I'm glad because that's a lot of what we do here in church, or at least it's what we do on a good day. It's ultimately why we exist as a church community, why United Church in Walpole is here to agitate, to explore, to dive deeper and to see God more clearly together. And then to live differently. For as John would say, we will be like him, for we have seen him as he is. May it be so for each and every one of us. Amen.